lives for all races connecting to the world. From Abuja, Nigeria's capital territory, this is Around News Live from MBN Network Media. This is MBN Network Media News for all races connecting to the world. Hello and welcome tonight. The federal government and organized labor have an emergency meeting to resolve their disagreement on the new national minimum wage. Industrial action by the labor unions grounds activities at government offices, airports, car installations, and schools, among others, around the country. On business news tonight, Nigeria Employers Consultative Association warns that the over 400,000 minimum wage proposed by labor could cripple businesses in the country. On sports news tonight, Real Madrid have confirmed the signing of France captain Kylian Mbappe and a free transfer from Paris Saint-Germain with the striker paying a five-year contract. And from the nation's capital, Vice President Kashim Shetima, who states the commitment of President Bolatini's administration to improving the quality of life of all Nigerians. <laughs> In what appears to be a make or mar dialogue, representatives of the federal government's and labor unions are currently locked in negotiation in a bid to end the industrial action embarked upon today by the organized labor over a new national minimum wage. While well, that meeting is coming after labor made good its threats to shut down activities beginning today with no fewer than 15 unions that are affiliates of the Nigeria Labor Congress, the NLC, and the Trade Union Congress, the TUC, directing their members to fully comply with the directive to down tools. While our correspondent, Daily Omoyeni, is at the venue of that meeting, which is holding at the office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation. Hello, Daily. Please, what more do you know about this ongoing talks? Yeah, good evening, Anne, and welcome, everyone. Uh, just behind me is the office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, where the Labour leaders are meeting with the Secretary to the Government of the Federation. We also hear that the National Security Advisor is in this meeting, Malam Nuhu Ribadu. Uh, right now, as we speak, we don't have any information as to what's going on because it's a closed-door meeting. However, um, of course, in my reports that you see much, uh, later in this news at 10, we interacted with some leaders of the Labour movement earlier today. Uh, of course, I had an ex exclusive interview with Mr. Festus Osifo, the President of the Trade Union Congress. And, of course, we ha held meetings with other Labour leaders asking them several questions. Of course, I did press some of the labor leaders that were hearing uh, some figures around town. That, uh, are these figures true? For instance, we heard that um, if uh, labor says that if government can give them a minimum wage of at least 100,000, they perhaps may come back uh, to, to negotiate with government based on that. But we don't have any uh, um, um, uh, proof as to that because they answered that question quite diplomatically, saying, well, they're not sure. They didn't say yes, and they didn't say no. But for right now, as we speak, this meeting started it's about 5 o'clock, and as we speak, it's past 10. They're still there at the office of DSGF Anne. 
Thank you very much, Dili Omoye, and he will definitely keep our eyes on that story and get more information as it develops. Our correspondent, Dili Omoye, at the venue of the meeting between the labor unions and the federal government. But before the negotiation resumed this evening, workers in the nation's capital, Abuja, and of course other parts of the country, stayed away from work in compliance with the directive by labor. Our correspondent, Dili Omoye, reports earlier that government offices in Abuja were also under lock and Key. Let the masses breathe was the first thing workers demanded as they cited Channel's television crew at the Federal Secretariat in Abuja. The Federal Secretariat is not the only place under lock and key. The Federal High Court, as well as other government offices in the city center, are also deserted with schools not left out, which is a delight for the unions who applaud the compliance by Nigerian workers. It is a popular industrial action, so we don't even need to be confident on anything because we strongly believe that this is one issue that touches the fabric of, uh, of workers in Nigeria. So, invariably, um, from our monitoring since uh, 6 a.m. this morning, the compliance level has been, has been, has been very, 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 very high. There's no any action, I mean, uh, any reaction from the government after the last meeting. So we need what we want is 475. So now they are giving us 60,000. Explain to us how a, a, a family will spend that for, I mean, 60,000 you are giving to us. They cannot explain. That's why we're on ground. And the strike will continue until they answer us. And the electric tariff have to come down because it's from 60 to 200 and something, which is at the, uh, uh, on the high side. The people are suffering. The labor leadership also have a message for the government. We expected that government should have apprehended this uh, all the while. Like we always said, we, we don't enjoy strike. Um, strike is a means to an end. So if immediately today we have commitment from government, if tomorrow we have commitment, if it's two weeks we have commitment from them, uh, then uh, uh, we would pull back. Some Nigerians expressed their feelings on the industrial action. They were trying. This is what we want in Nigeria. Let's see that change. Let, let the masses breed. We are suffering a lot. A bag, a bag of a, a rice is over 100,000. So what, do you, what, what, what are you ending? Your transport and whatever. Nothing. Level up to, so we are like what level are doing. We actually resumed four, maybe five weeks earlier before people resume, other schools resume. So we are lacking behind now academic, which make us unprepared for our exams. We are fully in support of whatever it is that the NLC and TUC stands for. So once the NLC and the TUC gives us directive that they have um, again complied with whatever it is that the federal government then if once, once they call off the strike, then we also will comply to that. The labor centers say only governments can decide the duration of the strike action, depending on its response. Daily Omoyeni, Channel's Television News. States in other parts of the northern region are also not left out in the industrial action declared by the two labor centers in Nigeria. Our correspondents report their schools and public offices remain closed. Members of the Trade Union Congress and the Nigeria Labor Congress working to ensure total compliance with the industrial action declared by the leadership of the leading labor centers in the country. State secretariats are locked, business activities are disrupted, and government facilities like hospitals and schools are shut down in compliance with the directive. We are pressing for many things, but two are prominent. One, the issue of minimum wage, which has been lingering over since April. No resolution has been reached. The second one is the hike in the, in the tariff of electricity. We want them to revert back to the former 65, 165 naira per kilowatts. We pray to Almighty Allah for a quick intervention to touch the minds of the people in control or in charge of the hem of the affairs so that we will find a long-lasting solution to the lingering issue as far as the new minimum wage is concerned in the country. It is a wrong time now that Nigerian workers are saying no to all these uh, obnoxious policies of inhumans they are doing to us. How much of the vehicle they are, they are riding? And we are the engine rooms of all what we are demanding for. 
The industrial action is taking place when some students are participating in the West Africa Examination Council exercise. However, some states report that the strike did not affect the exercise. The work has settled that we should conduct the examination for, the, for, the, for the, those who are writing their SSC. The strike does not affect us. I wouldn't have feel better because it's not good for a student to stay at home while he's supposed to be in school studying. Nevertheless, private businesses like banks that attempted to open business were shut down in some locations. Uh, the NAC, I mean the SEC and the SAC of the two labor unions in Zamfara State are going around to ensure compliance. Uh, as we are talking to you right now, we have visited about four. So anybody below level four. As you can see, we've locked the gates for people, staff that are under level 14. The 14 and above are in there working. But we know that if you allow everybody in, there won't be any effect. So anybody below level 14 should go home, and that's what we have done. In neighboring Ogun State, the Federal Secretary at Abilkuta in the capital is under lock and key, as workers stayed away from their offices in compliance with directives of the national leaderships of both the NLC and TUC. Labor also made good its promise in Oyo State, as many public school students in the Badon Oyo State capital were turned back by their teachers in the early hours of the day. <laughs> Banks and other financial institutions were seen running skeletal services as their gates remained closed to usual businesses. The government secretariat at Agudi also showed a very low turnout of workers, as most of those present are senior civil servants. <laughs> Still in the southwest, Undo State is not left out as organized labor officials gather at the NLC Secretariat for a brief meeting. The chairman of NLC and TUC in the state, in a chat with Channels Television, expressed confidence in the level of compliance in the state. Have you ever seen in our House of Rep or House of Senate where they just raise up and uh, sponsor a bill on behalf of workers? They will not, and they know we are the engine room for the money they were spending. But they will never sponsor any bill on our behalf. The labor union leaders later embarked on a monitoring and enforcement exercise to ensure compliance. From the southwest to a point state in the southeast, in Abakaliki, the state capital. Economic activities are to halt as banks are under lock and key. Some residents asked Nigerians to exercise patience with organized labor, noting this is a worthy sacrifice, while calling on the federal government to come to terms with organized labor and resolve the issues surrounding the proposed minimum wage. <laughs> NLC officials also locked down in a weary the Emo State capital. <laughs> Edo State, South South Nigeria is the next stop as members of the NLC and TUC locked up the state secretariat, shutting out civil servants from the complex in compliance with the union's directive. The unions say even though the state government recently increased the state's minimum wage to 70,000 naira, they had to comply with the national body's directive, maintaining that the strike is not targeted at the state. Well, the strike is not against the government, it's a national charity, and we are duty bound to comply. Calabar, the Cross River State capital, is not left out. Fuel stations, schools and banks across the metropolis are shot in compliance with the exercise. The impact of the strike is also felt in River State as organized labor is taking extra steps to ensure compliance. At the Niger Delta Development Commission headquarters, labor met some staff on ground and ordered all non-essential staff to evacuate the premises. Arriving the SPDC industrial area, they oppose strongly the partial compliance, insisting that the labor strike includes the management. An official of Pengerson reiterated labor stance. Let's meet today. Let's no, no, we need, to, we need to talk to somebody. Yeah, where let's meet today? No, you enter follow them. We yeah. need to talk yeah. to somebody. Take him to the way father is in charge. Yeah. Way father is in charge. Yeah. We need to talk to somebody. I got you. As the strike holds activities across the country, many Nigerians expect that organized labor and the federal government will once again find the common ground at the negotiation table to resolve the minimum wage on pass once and for all.
part two after the break. We have more on industrial action by the organized labor. <laughs> Media news for our races connecting you to the world. Federal government and organized labor in an emergency meeting to German tech conglomerate Siemens Energy, a capacity expansion at the Global One power plant. Staying with the labor strike, which is taking a toll on the aviation sector, as most local terminals were closed to passengers today. In Lagos and Abuja, passengers could not gain access into the departure halls at the airport gates and doors were taken over by union officials. The action also affected flight operations in rivers and Kaduna states. This is the gate of the Mutala Mohammed Airport 2 in Lagos, southwest Nigeria, as the aviation unions lock out both passengers and staff. Quite a number of passengers are stranded with luggages in hand and have expressed disappointment at this development. We are all here, disappointed, and we don't know what to do. Whether the NSC will call off their strike today or it will still continue, we don't know. We are begging the federal government to help us see to this situation in Nigeria. I'm in support of them, and I wish that this government would look at what they are doing. Not that they are going to increase it to 460, the economy cannot sustain it, but a little something reasonable so that their take home can take them to their house. Even if it's not enough to feed them. The General Aviation Terminal is not left out as the unions enforce the action here. At the Abuja airport in the nation's capital, a few passengers are seen at one of the entrances into the terminal as doors are locked. Within the airport terminal is empty. No staff are in sight and airline stands are empty. In River State, south-south Nigeria, the strike is in full swing at the Port Harcourt Airport. The National Union of Air Transport Employees block access into the airport for vehicles. Passengers are then forced to come down and walk into the airport. We have blocked the toll gate. Of Chairman the of the River State Chapter of Association of Nigerian Aviation Professionals, Emmanuel Akaha, explains why passengers are still being allowed to come into the airport. There is no check-in going on. There is no uh, aircraft movement. Even if aircraft touches ground, there will be no staircase to alight from. And finally, in northern Nigeria, Kaduna states, to be precise, the airport here is also empty of passengers as the strike takes its toll on airline operations, passengers, and aircraft movements. 
And staying with the labor action, Nigerians are also feeling the impact of the strike in the area of power supply as the transmission company of Nigeria, TCN, has announced the complete shutdown of the country's power grid by the unions. Making this known in a statement, TCN spokesperson Ndidimba explains that the action was carried out by the TCN workers at about 2 a.m. today, resulting in a nationwide blackout. Now, the nationwide industrial action did not affect the Supreme Court as it sat to hear matters from senior lawyers and litigants amid a heavy presence of police officers outside the court in Abuja. Members of the Judiciary Staff Union were said to have showed up at the court, but this did not stop the court from sitting. However, right here in Lagos, the strike paralyzed activities in the courts. A correspondent, Shalashi Ali, who visited some of the courts across the state, found that most workers stayed away in obedience to the June 1 circular issued by the Judiciary Staff Union of Nigeria, Justin, mobilizing its members for the strike. At the Court of Appeal, Lagos Division in Negotiary, Lagos Island, it was gathered that the court initially sat in the early hours of today, but had to stop when Justin officials came for an enforcement and a few lawyers could be seen milling around. At the Federal High Court in Ikoyi, lawyers and litigants were turned back from entering the court shortly after which the gates were firmly shut and padlocked. Some of the staff who showed up for work declined to talk to on camera but said off camera that they would have to return home. And some judges also showed up for work, but they were prevented from sitting. It was the same scenario at the Lagos High Court in Ikeja. Even the Tafawa Balewa Square Division with just an executive ensuring compliance with the strike. However, a few lawyers and litigants could be seen loitering around the courts, with many of them hoping there might be a reversal to the strike action. Meanwhile, the federal government has reiterated its appeal to the labor unions to discontinue the ongoing industrial action and return to the negotiating table. Well, the Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mr. Mohamed Idris, made this appeal, stressing the need for a realistic balance, warning that the proposed 494,000 naira by the labor centers can lead to job losses and economic hardship. He was speaking at a press briefing earlier today in Abuja in the company of the Minister of State for Labor and Employment, Mrs. Nkiruka Onyejocha. This is a heartfelt and deeply considered appeal to the labor unions to continue along the path of negotiation with the federal, state governments, and the organized private sector under the auspices of the tripartite committee that has been established by government to fashion out a new realistic minimum wage for the people of Nigeria. Let me make it clear that we are not opponents on this negotiating table. We are united by the fact that we want the best for the Federal Republic of Nigeria and all the over 200 million citizens of this country. We have a responsibility to strike a measured and realistic balance in this effort to arrive at a new minimum wage for Nigeria. The minimum wage is not only for the public sector workers. It will be binding on the private sector as well. This reality must be factored into all negotiations we enter into. President Bola Ahmed Chinubu is firmly committed in doing what is right, reasonable, and sustainable regarding these minimum wage negotiations. We therefore make this passionate appeal once again to the labor unions to reciprocate this gesture in the interest of this nation. The AGF has given uh, what the federal government position is, but at this point, what is important for all of us as Nigerians is to come together. We believe that this labor uh, movement also means well for Nigerians. After all, the negotiation they are doing, uh, according to them, is also on behalf of Nigerians. Finding a balance between government's position on capacity to pay the workers' consideration of economic realities may bring the much-desired solution to the ongoing impasse between both parties. Well, the chief executive officer of financial derivatives company believes that 90,000 naira may be a fair value, also considering the perspective of the government 
and labor. When we did our math and my projections, the other day I said, if some of 90,000 Naira could be fair value, as long as the federal government in, the, in its programs, in the, uh, what they call the stimulus package and fiscal incentives, is able to incentivize the private sector and small businesses to be able to meet this minimum wage. Without that, the minimum, the, the, those businesses are going to have to retrench people. So after considering all of that, I, I thought that 90,000 Naira could be a landing point uh, because the consequence of a disrupt, disruption in, in, the, in, in, the, in the business of the country, both at the public and private sector levels, could be quite, um, quite, uh, quite, um, it could be a very expensive uh, exercise. So I think right now, if going from 60,000 Naira to 90,000 Naira would be good, but if you take 90,000 Naira, it is 200% of what the 30,000 was five, five, five years ago, all right? So 200% divided by five gives you 40% a year. Has the inflation rate been 40% a year? No. So I think it's fair um, that we can, we can now begin to negotiate from right now, but I, I'm not sure that state governments, local governments and others can afford that, but somehow because the, the, their revenues have increased sharply because of the reduction in subsidy, because of the increase in tax mobilization, uh, because of all other factors, it, it should be possible that the federal government will help subsidize the states and local government and also help with these intervention programs to, to, to actually soothe, soothe the nerves and the pain of the small businesses and the ordinary man. That way, we bring some kind of equilibrium into the uh, collective bargaining process. The CEO of the Center for Promotion of Private Enterprise, Mr. Dr. Muda Yusuf, there is need to emphasize the importance of affordability in setting minimum wage recommendations. Dr. Muda Yusuf said this earlier today on our political program, business on our business program, Business Incorporated. So the starting point is affordability. Can these uh, uh, employers can they afford it? Because you are talking of national minimum wage. It's not just only about the federal. It's about the states, it's about local government, it's about the private sector. So many SMEs are struggling, even as business owners. They are declaring losses. Some business owners are borrowing to pay salaries as we speak. Some of them are recruiting only people who stay close to their places of work because of the challenges of transportation costs. So we are all in this together. Whether you are an employee, whether you are an employer, we are facing the heat together. So that is why we have to be reasonable and we have to situate this within the context of affordability, the context of sustainability, and the context of equity. What's the reasonable number for you? Well, it is difficult to say, but maybe around 100,000 or something, maybe that may, that may sound reasonable. And still ahead on the news at Nigeria, Employers Consultative Association wants the over 400,000 Naira minimum wage proposed by Labour for crippled businesses. <laughs> Being network media news for our races connecting you to the world. We have more stories for you as we head over to our Buddha studios now where Terry Ikume is standing by to give us more. Hello Terry and happy new week. Well, happy new week to you as well, Anne. Our former governor of Ogun State and senator representing Ogun East, Benga Daniel, is appealing to Nigerians to exercise more patience with the Tinubu government amidst the challenging economic conditions which has triggered an industrial action by labor. He made the appeal when he paid a courtesy visit, where he also delved into the debate on whether or not to return Nigeria to regional government. He is promising to vote in support of the bill if it is presented before the Senate. Whether we all like to believe it or not, the level of security has marginally improved 
since the advent of this administration. Um, in terms of the purchasing power of the Naira, that has not done well. But of course, this is expectedly in exchange for what you can call an inflow of investments, which also should reflect and regenerate the economy. Uh, my own opinion is that that cannot be an easy fix, and Nigerians are looking for easy fixes. So I'm still going to appeal to our people that um, we can't make eggs, or we can't make omelets without breaking eggs. So we, the process we are right now is based on, you know, breaking eggs, a little bit of uh, self, you know, deprivation, if you put it that way, and then the moral will definitely be better. The creation of those uh, six geopolitical zones is one of the brilliant things that the military have done. Um, and I, there's nothing really wrong in those states with the same kind of affinity coming together to fight a common cause. Um, so to that extent, I have no, no issues whatsoever. And I think if it comes to the floor of the Senate, I'll be one of the supporters of the concept of regional government. Meanwhile, Vice President Kashim Shatima says the administration of President Bola Tinubu is committed to improving the quality of life of all Nigerians. The Vice President said this at the commissioning of the Outer Southern Expressway Expansion Project in the Federal Capital Territory, where he represented the President. Our correspondent Kumbi Abuluade reports. This Outer Southern Expressway is the fourth in the latest series of project commissioning by the Federal Capital Territory Administration. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the Vice President Kashim Shatima arrives at the popular powerhouse junction in the Sokoro district of the Federal Capital Territory for the ceremony. We may be seated. Aside to the host, the FCT Minister and the Minister of State for the FCT, dignitaries in attendance include the President of the Senate, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, and members of the Federal Executive Council, among other dignitaries. The OSACS, which is a subsidiary of the Southern Parkway and divided into multiple phases, was awarded in 2013 and covers a total distance of 67 kilometers. The first phase, which is being commissioned, links the presidential villa to Asokoro district. It also connects several link roads to satellite towns like Yaya, Kubwa, and several others. Hence, the project is expected to reduce traffic at the old powerhouse junction. The cost of this project, as at when it was awarded, was 39.8 billion. But in 2021, it was revised to 59.9 billion. I can assure you that it's not only on road infrastructure. Go and see what is happening in education. We are trying to see that all our schools that are bad are rehabilitated, and that's what it's supposed to be. We're also going to health sector. Before December, Mr. President will invite you to go and commission not less than 75 kilometers of the area council roads. The vice president is representing President Bola Tinubu at this commissioning, which is holding on the first day of the industrial action by labor unions over the demand for a review of the national minimum wage. Though he did not speak on the labor issue, he pledges the administration's commitment to improving the quality of life of all Nigerians. Today, as I officially unveil this great road, I reaffirm my administration's dedication to enhancing the quality of life for all Nigerians. What is unfolding in our capital it's a testament to what can be achieved with our government's renewed hope agenda of positive transformation for the FCT and indeed Nigeria. He then proceeds to commission the project. This first phase of the Outer Southern Expressway expansion project that's just been commissioned here today underscores the commitment to address road infrastructure in the FCT. From the nation's capital, Kumbi Aboluadi, Channel. In other stories, the military has handed over eight rescued students of the Conference University of Science and Technology of Sarakogi State to Governor Usman Ododo. 
The students who were taken hostage by terrorists on May the 9th, 2024, were rescued on June the 2nd by troops of the Nigerian army in a dense forest near Orago village in Kwara State, in synergy with operatives of the Nigerian police force and other security agencies. At the handover which took place at the army headquarters in Abuja, Governor Dodo reiterated the commitment of his administration to prioritize the security of all residents of Konya State. At this level, I have come to realize that the Nigeria Army has all it takes to stamp out kidnapping, banditry, and all sorts of criminal activities from our land because the level of synergy, level of understanding, collaboration, and coordination carried out by them professionally is highly commendable, and I sincerely appreciate you and your men. I want to promise that Kogi State will always be dear to partner with you. You are ever ready to answer your call at any point in time. And fighting crime and criminality in our land, we are up to date. We have all it takes in terms of equipment. We will continue to collaborate and synergize with your agencies to make sure our land is free of all these criminalities. A letter up from the nation's capital back to Anne in Lagos. Thank you, Terry. Ahead of the forthcoming governorship election in Undo State, the Commissioner of Police in the state, Mr. Bayomi Oladipo, is promising adequate deployment of security personnel for the November 16th exercise. Well, he made this promise at a meeting of the Interagency called Alternative Committee on Election Security in Akure, the Undo State capital. Meanwhile, the INEC chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, is calling for adequate mobilization of residents to register and collect the over 200,000 uncollected permanent voter cards across the state. Security it's five months to the November governorship election in Undo State, and the INEC chairman leads an entourage from the commission to a meeting with members of the Interagency Consultative Committee for Election Security. Top on the agenda is the presentation of the security situation in the state by the state police commissioner. At the moment, we don't seem to have challenges as it relates to election, apart from the usual crimes that are being committed and are localized to the various senatorial districts. I we. In, on, on the side of the police, we realize that we cannot do it alone. And that is why we have the support of every security agencies and members of ISEC in the states that we move together as a team to tackle booting election uh, crises. On his part, the INEC chairman underscores the importance of collaboration among the various security agencies. He also appeals to stakeholders to mobilize residents for the ongoing continuous voter registration for the collection of the over 200,000 uncollected voters' cards across the state. I want to assure registered voters in Ondo State that they should continue to keep out in their numbers to register and come out and collect their PVCs from the current registration. But we also have literally over 200,000 cards uncollected from the last exercise. So we encourage people to come and collect their PVCs so that they can cast their votes to whoever they wish to vote for on election day. Before I conclude, let me say what I've said consistently, that INEC is not a we don't have a candidate in the Ondo governorship election. The choice of who becomes the next governor of Ondo State is entirely in the hands of voters in Ondo State and will protect their choices and will protect the integrity of the process. 
At the end of the meeting, the island chairman inspects some voter registration centers in the state capital. There are currently over 20,000 new registered voters in Ondo State. This is in addition to the over 1.5 million voter cards collected in the state during the 2023 general elections. Now let's find out more reactions trailing the industrial action by labor unions and how it is affecting businesses in the country. Well, Dominic Iwiwu is standing by. Banking so easy, so simple. Dial star 894 hash now to experience it. You first, first bank. <laughs> Thank you, Ayn. On business, more reactions are trading the strike action and backed upon by organized labor today. One is from Mr. Adewali Smart Oyerinde, Director General, Nigeria Employers Consultative Association. He believes the over 400,000 Naira labor is asking for will cripple businesses in Nigeria. He made the comments on Business Morning earlier today. Now, what we are meant to recommend is a national minimum wage. It's very important to, 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 to address that. The minimum wage below which no organization, either in the private or public sector, should pay. The wage ordinarily for the most vulnerable worker. It is not, the process is not to set a general wage increase. It is not. There has been conversations about living wage or there's no living wage. This particular committee that we have, it's set up to come up with recommendations for a new minimum wage. And for us, one of the key objectives is that you must protect jobs. Because if organized businesses continue to suffer the, the current situation, look, there's no way we can protect jobs. That is the, the basic reality of it. There's no way businesses can remain sustainable when their affordability becomes in part. The federal government and labor unions are about to commence a meeting. Once we get updates on that, we will inform you. To some company news, listed energy giant Gary Gupar PLC has signed a memorandum of understanding with German multinational technology conglomerate Siemens Energy to collaborate on capacity expansion at the Gary Gu One power plant. The agreement signed in Berlin involved plans for various solutions, including upgrading the Gary Gu One power plant from its current capacity of 435 megawatts to 500 megawatts. According to a statement from Gerigu Power PLC, the partnership aims to advance sustainable, resilient, and efficient power generation while ensuring longevity of assets. These efforts are aimed at supporting the growth and sustainability of Nigeria's electricity supply industry. The chairman of the board of directors of Gerigu Power PLC, Mr. Femi Otedola, led the Nigerian company's team while the managing director for the Middle East and Africa, Mr. Diemetias Hiesdofa, led the Siemens Energy team. Gerigu Power PLC has reaffirmed its commitment to the energy sector, announcing plans for mergers, acquisitions, and strategic partnership to bolster market presence and operational effectiveness. The company also emphasized its pivotal role in Nigeria's energy landscape, aiming to drive national development and enhance the well-being of Nigerians through reliable power supply. The domestic equities markets kicked off the first trading day of June in negative territory. Ini John Mekwa tells us more. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the stock market report. Unfortunately, we're beginning the month of June, the very first trading day of the month in the red, but we shouldn't be worried. I mean, we had a lot of reds in May, but we closed in the green. But for today, the all share is down 0.13%. Losing some 100s around here, we see that it closed at 99,173.87. Uh, but the good thing is the market cap is still uh, doing good, looking at 56.10 trillion naira. But all of this is because of mostly the fugas. Uh, we know that that's the most liquid counter and controls the sentiments around the market. FBN holding dropped 4.69 percent. UBA also did the same thing. Unchanged, we had GTCO and Zenit Bank, but access 
was uh, moved to the red side. And so, of course, we expect that the banking counter dropped, but it was really good, really bad. Uh, it's 0.84 percent in the red. Consumer goods also are uh, slightly down. That's because of Nigerian brewery. It has some news around that. You might want to uh, take a look at that. Oil and gas is unchanged. This is like a status quo for this counter. But the summary of all of this is that the very first trading day in the month of June is in the red. <laughs> We'll be taking you live to Abuja to join the federal government and labor union meeting. 2024, further to the negotiation by the tripartite committee on national minimum wage and subsequent withdrawal of labor from negotiation, the leadership of the National Assembly intervened on 2nd June 2024. The organized labor declared nationwide strike on Monday, 3rd June 2024, to drive from its demands. The federal government, in the national interest, convened a meeting with labor held in the office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation on Monday, 3rd June, with a view to ending the strike. After exhaustive deliberations and engagement by both parties, the following resolutions were reached. The President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency, Ola Metinumbu GCFR, is committed to a national minimum wage that is higher than 60000 Arising from the above, the tripartite committee is to meet every day for the next one week with a view to arriving at an agreeable national minimum wage. Labor, in deference to the high esteem of the President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Federal Republic of Nigeria, has committed in paragraph 3 sub 2 above and it takes to convene a meeting of its organs immediately to consider this commitment and for no worker no worker will be victimized as a result of the industrial action down in Abuja on the 3rd of June 2024. And this document is signed for the federal government by the Minister of Information and National Orientation and the Honorable Minister of State for Labor and Employment. For the organized labor, President Nigeria Labor Congress. President Tread Junior Congress. Let me reassure Nigerians that we have had a very realistic and patriotic meeting and the results will be very, very manifest soon. Thank you very much. So, national anthem. Over to you, and MBN Network Media News for all races connecting to the world.
Thank you, um, Dominique. Israel's military says that it has confirmed the death of four more people abducted by Hamas on October the 7th. While it says the victims were killed during an Israeli operation in Khan Yunus and southern city of Gaza, and the bodies are still being held by the militants. Tenyola Oyetayo has more international news and around the world in five. For your international news around the world in five. Claudia Scheinbaum has been elected as Mexico's first woman president in an historic landslide win. According to Mexico's official electoral authority, preliminary results showed the 61-year-old former mayor of Mexico City winning between 58 and 60 percent of the vote in Sunday's election. That gives her a lead of almost 30 percentage points over her main rival, businesswoman Xochitl Galvez. The election campaign was marked by unprecedented levels of violence, often carried out by organized crime gangs. Scheinbaum, a former energy scientist who had the support of the outgoing president, has promised to reduce the violence and improve the lives of women in a country with one of the world's highest rates of femicide. After suffering a stunning blow in last week's election, South Africa's ruling African National Congress has begun closed-door negotiations with its political opponents about forming a coalition government. On Sunday, the Electoral Commission announced that elections in South Africa were free and fair, but with no single party gaining an outright majority. The final election results confirmed the ANC's decline in support to just more than 40% percent of the vote, far less than the absolute majority it had for the past 30 years after ending white minority rule. President Cyril Ramaphosa still described the result as a victory for democracy, calling on rival parties to find common ground. We are all called upon to recognize that the results of the election in the end reflect the will of the people. What this election has made plain is that the people of South Africa expect their leaders to work together to meet their needs. More than 50 people have died in India over the past three days as a brutal heat wave continues to grip parts of the country. Around 33 people died in the northern state of Uttar Pradesh over the weekend due to the heat. In Orissa state, about 20 people died, according to reports. Many of these deaths were reported on the 1st of June as India voted in the last phase of polling for its general election. The heat in northern and central India and parts of the West has been unrelenting for the past two weeks, with maximum temperatures hovering around 45 to 46 degrees Celsius for days and even climbing up to 50 degrees Celsius in some parts. The Israeli military has continued to launch more airstrikes across the Gaza Strip as officials discuss the latest proposed deal to end hostilities and exchange prisoners. In the south, Israeli air raids were reported overnight on Sunday in multiple under an expanding ground invasion, as well as Canyonis. At least 12 people were killed in the overnight attacks on the two cities. The three-part deal unveiled by the U.S. President Joe Biden last week would see a surge of humanitarian aid, as well as an exchange of some hostages for Palestinian prisoners before a permanent end to the war. However, the proposal has encountered vocal opposition from some members of Israel's government. And South Korea is set to suspend a 2018 military agreement with its neighbor after a North Korean campaign that saw balloons carrying trash sent over the border. The National Security Council of South Korea says it would present a plan to fully suspend the deal for approval to the cabinet at a meeting on Tuesday. North Korea said it sent the balloons filled with trash and manure in response to what it called a propaganda campaign by defectors based in the South and called the action an effective countermeasure. Suspending the agreement will pave the way for the South to conduct training near the military border.
And finally, a U.S. couple have pulled a safe from a lake with an estimated $100,000 locked inside. James Kane and Barbie Agostini came across the safe in New York while magnet fishing, a hobby which involves searching for metals. Once they realized what they stumbled upon, they did some research and decided to call the New York Police Department to make sure there were no legality issues. A lot of the money is water damaged, but some can be salvaged and with no way of finding the owner the couple are able to keep their lucky find and that's your international news around the world in five <laughs>